The Dairy School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, an agriculture division of Dow DuPont. Bernard Tobin here today on the Dairy School in uh, Beachville, Ontario at Harcomb Farms. Uh, joined by uh, Rob McKinley and John Hawks. Gentlemen, uh, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no trouble. You're awesome. very welcome. Now, Rob, this is your farm. You milk around, oh, 70 or, uh, cows or so. And uh, I want to talk today about your biodigester. Um, John, you've talked about the fact that there's about 42 digesters in Ontario, but none like the one that Rob has here on the farm. Rob, what makes it, I guess, unique? So I guess, the first off, the size of the digester. So typically the other digesters that exist in Ontario are larger scale. Um, ours is set up to run solely on dairy manure and our capacity is 20 kilowatts. Typically the digesters that we'll see in Ontario already are 10 to 20 times bigger than that. But it's a slightly different model. So what we're trying to do here is just simply capture whether, whatever energy or um, benefit we can with the material we have. So most of the other digesters that exist in the province will bring in off-farm waste. So certainly not to take away from that model, that just wasn't necessarily what our kind of focus was here. Right, right. John, this is a product, this biodigester, uh, from Belgium. Tell me a little bit more about it. You know, again, how it works, 20 kilowatts, that's pretty small. It is pretty small. Actually, the, uh, so Bioelectric has, uh, was formed in, uh, I believe it was about 2008. Um, they, they deliberately focused on the average dairy farm in Belgium, which happens to be rather similar to Ontario, roughly 77 uh, milking cows is the average size of, of most of the farms that we have here. Um, so their system, their smallest one, is actually 10 kilowatts. And they, uh, there was a, a feeling in the industry, as there was over here, that small-scale systems wouldn't work. They were uh, too complex. They were, uh, you couldn't get the cost down. And they set out to prove, the, prove that wrong. And uh, now there are 200 of these sold in Europe. Uh, this one is number 164 mm -hmm. here. Um, and the, the model is, the digestion model is essentially the same as the bigger ones. You use, you, you use heat and mixing to, uh, to create gas from the organics that are coming in off the farm. In this case, as Rob says, it, it's only uh, organics, dairy slurry from, from the farm, a little bit of corn silage that we're using to boost the gas. Uh, but no other off-farm materials, no complexity, uh, no contrary products in there that you have to screen out somehow. Um, and uh, they've kept the design very simple. Uh, and very uh, low cost in terms of uh, maintenance time and cost. So uh, this is the first one. Uh, it took us a long time to get to this point. Uh, it goes back to, for me, 2008, first starting to hear of uh, dairy farmers in the province saying, what have you got that fits me? I don't have $3 million. I, want, I, I can do something that's uh, a more manageable scale. Right. And so we uh, looked around the world at a variety of things, and this one... Uh, uh, what we liked about it, and Rob and I both looked at this together, was it's simple, uh, it's, it's an elegant solution, and it works. Yeah. And uh, hey, Rob, tell me about again, you know, how it, how your experience so far, how has it fit your farm? So it's fit quite well. I mean, if we if we look at it at a few different angles, first in terms of integration. So what did I have to change to make this uh, work with our system? Um, I would say the biggest sort of uh, decision we had to make coming into it was we were a sand bedded barn previously and certainly sand bedding doesn't work well with digesters so we we had to make a decision about transitioning away from that but conversely because we were a sand bedded barn the infrastructure so the system the alley scrapers the cross gutters the reception pit made it quite easy to integrate the digester so there's simply nothing more complicated than kind of uh, blocking off the pipe that goes to the manure pit that's where all the plumbing happens at our reception pit at the back corner of the barn um, and dropping a pump in so I mean, alley scrapers run on a uh, timer eight times a day. Twice a day, I manually feed the digester. So in terms of infrastructure, um, it, um, it's, been, it's been quite easy to, to integrate that into the system. Uh, above that though, we also are working towards making use of the solids coming off the digester. So certainly when I look at the whole package um, in terms of what we wanted to do at, at our farm here was um, certainly try to monetize either electricity sales or cost offsets and so the one of the things we're doing is um, 
we're going to be using the separated solids to bed the cows. Yeah, and you're connected to the grid, so uh, yes. tell us about that. Yeah, certainly. So what we end up with is two connections, and you'll see when you look in the container, there's two engines, each of them 10 kilowatts. So the one of them is connected with a net meter. So it's nothing more complicated than a breaker at a 200 amp service at the back of the barn, which supplies the demand load at the farm first. And then if our, if our demand on farm drops below 10 kilowatts, our meter runs backwards and we get that credit back at the end of the month. Um, the second connection is a, is a microfit connection direct to the grid. And so we get the advantage of getting a slightly higher rate for that piece. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we have, I mean, effectively we're producing about five kilowatts more than our base load. So, I mean, effectively we're off the grid, but we get the advantage of the grid connectivity to, um, you know, take up peak demands and things like this. Awesome. John, let's talk about the investment and the return on investment. Um, what, uh, what does a, a system like this um, going forward uh, cost a farmer like Mr. McKinley? So just to preface that a little bit, when we, when we started out, um, we knew that there might be some adaptation that we would have to make to comply with local codes, mm -hmm. uh, Canadian Standards Association, so uh, electrically and on the gas side. Uh, plus the fact that we, this is the first one that we'd done, we knew that there would be some work that we'd end up doing on the plumbing side. So we did have to make some changes to the electrical, to the wiring, to the breakers, to uh, uh, some lighting, receptacles, that sort of thing, to comply with local codes. And we did that here rather than get it done in the factory. In hindsight, we wouldn't do that. We would do it all back in Europe because it's, it's doable and less expensive. Um, on the gas side, it was actually quite relatively simple. This is essentially explosive gases and managing them and safety issues. And we worked with TSSA and they worked very well with us. And we, we, that was a relatively small, small adaptation. Um, so there'd be some cost in there in the first one that we wouldn't do the second. So if you're looking at a 20 kilowatt system um, with, those, with those changes and uh, kind of a simplicity that will come along with the second one, you'll be looking at about $350,000 for a 20 kilowatt system. Um, and if you can offset your electrical cost, the electricity costs of say twenty-five thousand, uh, and some heating costs of of, of ten thousand in terms of a propane uh, um, replacement, and you've got about thirty-five grand in, in cost to offset. Right. Adding the the, uh, the screw press and the and the uh, delivery system adds some more capital, yeah. and but also gives you some more gain. So all in, you might be at four fifty if you wanted to do absolutely everything that Rob has done. Over how many years? I, we're looking, if we can get in under the 10 year payback, we think that that's a healthy kind of level for, for farmers to look at and uh, is pretty similar to what you would see with a combine or, or another large uh, farm investment. Mm -hmm. If we can get it down to eight as we go through the learner curve, that's a, that's a target we'd like to get to, awesome. uh, sort of an eight year payback. Awesome. Rob, final question for you. Um, you know a lot of farmers like yourself in that 70, 80, 100 uh, cow uh, vein. Um, good fit, what do you... For those farmers, what do you tell them from your experience? Yeah, so certainly, I mean, the questions I get often are operationally, you know, how much time, because again, the experience we have in the province is these large digesters where it's a, it's a thing, right? Yeah. Um, honestly, day to day, you know, I feed the digester while I'm going through my routine making feed for the cows. Um, I poke my head in the door of the container once a day, just listen for funny noises. Otherwise, it's, it runs on its own. I mean, there's a well-developed app that we interface with the machine. I get text messages if there's any issue. Um, Every 400 hours, I change the oil. It's a 20-minute activity. It's really like, it is, when I look at the benefit, it's considerably unonerous yeah. to the day-to-day. -day. Like, it's, it's incredibly rewarding on cool mornings to just see two puffs of smoke coming out <laughs> those exhausts. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you for uh, sharing your time, taking the time. And uh, as I say, I think lots of people will be interested in the story. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>